All right, let's uh, pray and begin. And uh, let's pray that the online students are able to hear my voice clearly. And there are going to be some issues there, but uh, let's pray that everything comes well. Let's pray. Our Father, we bow before you this morning. Thank you, Father, for adding another day to our lives. Uh, and Lord, even as we take time for your word, help us, Lord, to draw near to you. Uh, your word says, draw near to me, and I will draw near to you. So, Father God, we are um, stepping forward to come closer to you, and we believe, oh God, that uh, you are coming closer to us. We worship you this morning, Lord. We honor you. We exalt and magnify your name. In Jesus' name we pray. All right, so let's uh, get back into our uh, class. We've been talking about faith, and uh, we came to chapter two in our notes where we saw that even though uh, God is gracious, uh, God is great, He wants to bless us, He is expecting faith on our part. So it's only when we employ faith that we are actually able to receive from God. So we were saying that um, it feels somewhat contradictory, opposite to each other, that everything is available through God's grace, but at the same time, God is depending on our faith. So God is sovereign, which means God can do everything, and yet he's asking for faith from man. So that is what we were discussing in the last class. So we are going to go further from there. Uh, get back into chapter 2 here. We, we were saying that um, people like Abraham, Sarah, and many others, like if you take, for example, even Joshua, God had promised that the walls would come down, and yet he had to believe in God. For the walls to come down. So even when something is a given, even when something is declared by God as his purpose, people need to have faith. And that's when we can see things manifest. So this is how uh, things work in the kingdom of God, even when we consider salvation. There is a scripture in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8. Um, we can also look at verse 9 there, where somebody, you can read it out aloud, that would be good, anyone from the class. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, it's there in our notes. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and, not, and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God. Okay. So, salvation is the gift of God. And salvation is the gift of God. But notice a couple of words there. For by grace you have been saved through faith. Grace is also there, faith is also there. So, God has already granted grace. When God has granted grace, he said in the last class that Jesus died for the whole world. It's available. Salvation is available. But notice two words. Grace is there. That's God's grace. However, you've been saved through faith as well. So if we do not have faith, salvation does not come to us. It's somewhat like we can imagine a can of water, uh, and all of us here are thirsty. But if there is a can of water, do you think water is available for everyone? Yes, it's been given. There's a can of water kept for anybody who is thirsty, so it's available. But for you, for you and me to get water, what what is it that we have to do? Yeah, we have to go, we have to maybe, you know, uh, open the tap, uh, have a glass with us, a container, and then take the water, drink it. So that's somewhat like faith. Even though God has granted 
we need faith. So faith becomes that step that you and I take. In the same way, we can say that, oh, this whole world has so many soap factories. There's soap and a shower gel and all kinds of things available out there in the world. But is everyone clean? Maybe somebody who's working in the dust at the end of the day, you find that person is clean. There's so, so much soap available. Unless they go wash themselves clean, it's not going to work out. So that step of taking what is available can only be done through faith. So there is grace, but there is also faith, which is required. And even salvation works like that. Uh, sorry, I'm a little distracted here because there are uh, some comments from our uh, online students. They're saying the sound is not very clear. And uh, what I would suggest is if you can turn on the captions from your side, I won't be able to do that for all of you. So the captions op option is for you. You can turn it on at your end and uh, you'll be able to understand what I'm saying. Uh, I hope that works. Please try it. Okay. okay. So, how important is faith? How important is faith? Can God work when there is no faith? Can God work? Because He's gracious and He's only provided everything. So, why can't God work? Yeah. No faith. Where do we see this example? Okay, I suppose. Uh, uh, what is what is there in it? Luke chapter eight. Okay, Luke chapter six or oh, Mark five. Luke eight. Okay. Okay, so there was a lady who was bleeding, and what happened? Okay, so yes, yeah, so she had faith, right? I'm asking, what if there is no faith? No faith. No faith. No faith. Yeah, but where do you see it? You're giving me the answer. Your answer is correct, but based on what? Is my question. Then the way. Was there any time when Jesus did not heal because there was no faith? In his own town, yes. So we, we do hear once Jesus say that. In his own town, he was not able to do miracles because people looked at him and said, Oh, this Jesus we already know. Come on, you know, how is he a miracle worker? And they did not have faith. And at that point, even though Jesus wanted to do, do you think Jesus wanted to do miracles? But he couldn't. Can you imagine? How is it that God couldn't? Can we ever say that God couldn't? Because He can. At all times, He can. But the dynamics here is that of faith. Faith is so important that when faith is lacking, Jesus could not do the miracles. So, what does that tell us? There are many things that God wants to do for me, for you, and in our lives. And yet, our lack of faith will limit God. It will stop God from doing what He wants to. Yes, Vinay? Um, can we say that uh, faith is also a desire? Like uh, God cannot push anything on us, on, on, on us, mm -hmm. because we are not robots, and He has given us free. And with that free will, we are desiring for a healing. We are desiring for salvation. And because we are desiring, we are asking Him. And because of because we are asking, he's doing it. 
So are you saying faith is faith desire? Is that what you're asking? No, not faith is desire. I'm saying that because uh, we know we can do, and we are also desiring healing. Hmm. And by faith, we know that we can. Right. We are desiring, and we are asking them to heal us. Here, they do, they, they are not. They, they are not even desiring to be healed, so they are not really healed. Because okay, now I'm mixed up. Uh, so, like, um, like he can't okay. push anything on, on us. Correct. He wants us to go to him with free will. Yeah. And when we have faith, we are uh, like by free will we are going to him by faith, and only then he is able. He is doing. Mm -hmm. He's not pushing anything on us. Yeah. Okay. So you talk about free will. Like God giving us the opportunity to choose, to select. Uh, that's true. So God will not force us to do anything or even to receive anything. He will share his heart's desire, his promise, but it's left to us. If we reject it, then it won't work out in our lives. So uh, quickly coming back here to our online students. So online students, uh, Seems like you're not understanding anything today because you can't hear me fine. Therefore, I would request us to please log out. I'm so sorry about this. Um, there's a there's a general computer issue that's going on. I don't know. We're not able to access the settings option. So um, you can log out if you wish to. Those of you who want to stay on and uh, let me try. All right, so we just continue. So what we're saying is, if there is no faith, uh, then God is, even God is unable to do what he wishes to do. So there are two passages here in our notes. Uh, Matthew chapter 30, verses 58 to 57 and 58. As Kushbu um, uh, here said, in his own place, people did not honor him. They did not have faith in him. So Verse 57, so they were offended at him, but Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor except in his own country and in his own house. Now he did not do many mighty works there because of their unbelief. So unbelief is what stopped God from accomplishing what he desired us. So it's a very, um, it's a very scary thought for us. That we can hinder the purposes of God when we lack faith. So God may intend for us to serve Him, or He may open doors for us and say, "Would you be willing to step into it and uh, uh, serve?" Now, take for example Moses and Joshua. Joshua has seen the leadership of Moses. But now the time has come for Joshua to step in and God is calling him. Joshua is intimidated. It's like, I don't think I can do this. This is too scary. Moses did a great job. How will I be like Moses? And we know the scriptures in Joshua chapter 1 where God tells him again and again, be strong, be courageous, be strong and very courageous. So God was continually encouraging him to stay in faith. But there is a choice. Like how when I was saying, there is a choice. Joshua could have said, sorry God, I can't do it. I can't do it. You find somebody else. 
So if we do that with our lives, when God is calling and God is speaking, we say, I don't have faith. I can't do this. I don't believe it. Even if God wants that for us, it will not. Yes. Which chapter two? Efficiency, yeah. Huh. Yeah. Okay. So you're saying salvation is a gift of God, so it's available to all. So whether we we have faith or not, we get salvation. Is that what you mean? Because it's a gift. Then why why are all the people in the world not saved. Okay, so are we saying that um, see, salvation is for everyone and based on Ephesians 2? Uh, yeah, verse 8, uh, Gautam is saying that uh, it is a gift of God. So it should be available for everyone. And the next verse says it's not your own doing. Got it. However, there is the word faith also there. Uh, faith depends on man. God has faith. God believes, right? When God is doing a miracle or releasing salvation, God is already believing. There's no problem with God and the way God believes. Then whose faith are we talking about there? Grace through faith, man's faith. Everything else is there. God has already granted it. It is a gift. We don't have to earn it. All that is there. But still, it's only through faith. If we don't have faith, then we cannot receive salvation. You got it? See. That is the reason we have to preach the gospel. In the book of Romans, we read that, that how will people uh, respond if they don't hear the gospel? How will they hear if nobody goes? So which is why you and I have a responsibility to preach and proclaim the gospel. It's already available. It's already available. But how can people put their faith in something that they don't know about? Got it. So, as much as it is a gift, faith is necessary on man's part to receive what God has provided. If there is faith, we will get it. If there is unbelief, we have closed the door. Nothing will happen. Unbelief. God cannot move if there is unbelief. Okay, so uh, I hope that has clarified your doubt. Got them? The comments, not comments. Okay, okay, we can discuss later after class. Yes, sir. Then. If Jesus had faith, what kind of faith? See, the God kind of faith. Remember, we said, have the faith of God. The way God works, everything he says happens. And he said, let there be light, there was light. So that is perfect faith. Whatever God is saying, he believes in 200%. That's the God kind of faith. That's the faith Jesus had. Faith, 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 faith. Where did he put his faith on? See, he is the word himself, right? John 1.14. The world became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. So, he is the word himself. Anyway, you have the subject on uh, Christology. When you study that, you will have clarity on uh, this question. Is that okay? Then, all right. Yeah, so. Puja is saying when we believe and have faith, only we get salvation. That's true. So salvation is available 
but we cannot be saved unless we believe. So there are these two opposing things we've understood. God can do everything and yet it depends on our faith. We are clear on that. So we all need faith. It is faith to which we relate to God. Yes. Yes. Feeding is Okay, so you're talking about the lady who had the flow of blood and Jesus healed her. Many of them didn't know this. Okay. Okay. Yeah, see, okay, the question is uh, the people in Jesus' times, it's an assumption frame that they did not know his word. How do we know? Jesus taught, it says, what did he teach? We don't have right details of what he taught. So, as far as my understanding goes, I'm sure he proclaimed scriptures. We see in many places Jesus upheld scriptures. He was the living word himself, but he honored the word of God, which came in as the Old Testament. So I am 100% sure that Jesus was teaching the word. And people were putting their faith in God through the scriptures, plus through the life of Jesus. So when we say they had faith, where did the faith come from? Faith would have come through the word. The faith would have come through knowing Jesus also. That, oh, here is Jesus. He heals. He delivers. So they're putting their faith in the living word. That is the source. Okay, our believer is sick. Like you're talking about the notes to me, or talking point two, I'm supposed to teach that. So, anyway, so good question. There are times when God can work independent of faith. You're asking me about an unbeliever. Unbeliever does not have faith. Okay, sometimes it happens, right? Some of our colleagues they don't believe. In fact, they argue. And we, we tell them, okay, fine, even then I'm praying for you. We pray and they receive. Or something like that. And we are wondering, that person does not have faith, how did he receive? One point is, it's hard to tell whether they have faith or not, because faith is of the heart. We don't know their heart. That is one point. Second, assuming that they have zero faith, God can still do a miracle. If we need an explanation, think about the man at the pool of Bethsaida. Okay? The man at the pool of Bethsaida. He did not have any faith. He was paralyzed for 38 long years. He's at the pool. He's waiting for some angels to come and stir up the water. And somebody would push the person into the water. So when Jesus comes, he, does, he probably did not even know who is this person. But we see that Jesus healed. He healed someone who did not expect who did not, you could say, believe. Or think about Lazarus, dead man. Where is the faith? The man is dead. How did Jesus raise him back to life? There was no faith in that dead man. Was it faith in his sisters? I don't think so, because they were saying, yeah, at the time of resurrection, Jesus, he will raise everyone. So people did not believe that he's going to raise the dead person. But this is what we call as. God's sovereignty. He overrules that thing of faith, independent of faith, whether there is faith or no faith. Sometimes, let me say that again, sometimes only, sometimes God will do the work. Even in our lives, I think it has happened that sometimes we we are not purely trusting God, but still the miracle happens. So God is gracious like that. But the general or the common way in which God works is through faith. Got it? Okay. 
Yes. Faith and belief. So if we go back to our first session now, yeah, we said both of them come from the same root word, same Greek root word, pistio, right? Uh, so pistis. So it comes from there, and both of them mean the same thing. One is a noun, and faith is a noun, and belief is a verb. That's so weird. Finish it. Yes. Is it our? Correct. Correct. To be initiate faith. To be initiate faith. Okay. Good question. So we can look at it like this. We say Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. It means two things. That faith will come from him. He's our source. Second, he is the perfection of faith. So if we want to learn about faith, we've already said this. We have to look at Jesus. So he's the perfection, he's the source. Okay. So it comes from him. However, it depends on us also. The kind of faith that you and I carry, it depends on how much of the word we have received, how much of the word. We are believing. It depends on all that. So he's the source, and yet, in a way, don't get me wrong. Yeah, God's grace is a gift. But if you may call it the work, the work that you and I have to do is spend time in His Word, and from there get our knowledge, revelation, all that, and be strong. Then the faith comes. Okay, so we have understood here that um, God can work independent of our faith. And if we consider faith, you know, faith is something that gives all of us equal opportunity to receive from God. God could have, you know, come up with some guidelines when he said, uh, oh, only the very Mighty men of God or women of God, people who are very spiritually mature, strong, alone can receive from me and the others cannot. Or, you know, any other way. One particular community can receive from me, whereas the other community cannot. But the way God has um, made it possible for us to receive from Him shows that He gives all of us equal opportunity. Equal opportunity. So, independent of how long we have been in the Lord, independent of uh, uh, you know which community we come from, independent of our social standing, our race, our skin color, whatever. Right? It doesn't matter to God. It really doesn't matter to Him. All He sees for, all He looks for is, is there faith or no faith? All the other things, it, it, does, it doesn't matter. If there is faith, God works. If there is no faith, God cannot work. So, equal opportunity. Faith has enabled us to walk in equal opportunity. The free gift is made available to everyone. Now, while we're talking about faith, we must also recognize that we cannot use faith as we wish. There are Boundaries to faith. There are what is known as perimeters to faith. So with God, all things are possible. We hear that scripture, all things. Now, even though scripture states all things are possible, all things should be aligned to the word of God. Now, if certain things are not aligned, and then I say, no, I believe, I will do it. For example, if I go to the top of this building today, and I say, I believe. I will fly if I jump off the terrace. I believe. I don't doubt in my heart. I fully believe. Okay? So I'll go and then I'll try jumping. What will be the consequence? <laughs> yeah, a few consequences broken leg, broken arm, but those are the things we get expect. But why? I have faith, no? I have faith. Yeah, 
Yeah. So we look at the way God works in the world around us. We know that there are natural laws, and we don't see Jesus manipulate natural laws unless there was a real need that people had, and he wanted to meet the need. For example, one day, one day right? Or whenever we don't know the, the many accounts that are there in scripture. One day. We find Jesus was walking on the water, noticed by his disciples. But there are other times when we read Jesus was sleeping in the boat. Jesus, you can walk on the water. Why don't you only walk on the water? Why are you taking the boat? We can ask that question, isn't it? And we know this. Jesus breaks bread, he distributes. Thousands of people are fed. Why can't Jesus do that every day? Because God has given natural laws only on occasions, right? Exceptionally, there are some, you know, changes, right? God did miracles like that, but every day he did not do that. So we go by natural laws to answer your question. So if I go and I do things like that, I am going against the law of gravity. Unless there is a requirement of some sort. That you know, it's, it's some an exceptional case, then it may work, but otherwise it will not work. So there are many meters. If we stretch our boundaries and we say anything, oh, God told me I'm going, God told me I'm doing this, right? Without properly verifying if it is aligned to what God wants us to do or what is in God's word, it won't work out. Perimeters will come. We'll discuss more about it later, even when it comes to manipulating people. Right? We may have a desire that my boss has to promote me. And I'm trying to use my failure and command, I command you, you will promote me. You know, random things like that. You can't. We cannot manipulate people's will and make them do what we want them to do. Cannot. Cannot happen. There is a boundary. There are perimeters. So Though we say with God all things are possible, it's true, it's possible, there are certain boundaries which we cannot cross. Okay, we will uh, discuss more in detail about that later on. There are certain areas where, though, um, you know, God says we need, He needs our faith, things are established. In the last class, I was mentioning how. The second coming of Christ, we can't stop that. So um, maybe you know certain world events which are given in scripture, we can't stop that. Even without faith, if we say no, I am believing and I'm gonna stop all these things from happening, it won't because there are certain things that have already been established, which whether we like it or not, whether we employ faith or not, God is going to do it anyhow. So there are those matters as well. And uh, finally, we can also uh, consider a realm of a mystery, a realm of a mystery. There are th things that happen in our lives uh, where you know we, we may try to understand it with faith, oh, I have faith, I did not have faith, and uh, it, it, things happen like this. But there is no explanation to those matters. Right? There are some such matters in all our lives where we are just not able to explain why it happened or why it did not happen. With all the scripture that we know. But let's leave those matters to God. We don't understand. Why is God? Why is it? Your word says, but why did it happen like this? It's a realm of mystery sometimes. And God is God. We may be asking Him, God, you have to tell me. You have to tell me. Why? 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 He may or may not choose to tell you. He may say, no, I don't want to tell you. You can't handle it. Or, you know, it's it's for my, like God's wisdom, God's mind. We cannot, we cannot even understand why those things are not revealed to us. But it's a realm of mystery. We just let it be. Say, so, okay, God, you are God. I am limited. I am a person. I am a human being. I go by your word. I'm not able to understand everything, but I know you are good. I know you have the best. Uh, desire, purpose for me. So I'm going to work in your ways. So there's also the realm of mystery where everything cannot be explained every time. And as believers, sometimes 
we have to be okay with that. So um, that's about the interaction of sovereignty, grace, and faith. Uh, and I'm going to stop here. If there are questions, we will take it up and continue with the third chapter in the next class. So I can see a couple of Okay, Sridharj uh, is asking, faith with deeds leads us to salvation. So that's not what I'm saying, uh, Sridharj. We've already established to Ephesians 2 that we cannot earn salvation. It's a gift of God. So let's be clear about it. But what we're saying is faith and works go hand in hand, which is what Apostle James talks about in his writings. So that's the point that I was trying to make. The Saubhagya says sometimes we have faith that God will answer prayer, but sometimes God doesn't answer that request. Why? So there are many reasons why a prayer does not get answered. Uh, if it is not in the will of God, or secondly, it's not getting answered because it's not the right time. There can be demonic uh, interference, which is why the answer is not coming. Or the final reason is, as I said, history. We don't know why. We don't know why it was not answered. But what should we do? Persevere. Persevere in Christ. Ashina, yes. Ephesians 2, verses 8 and 9. Uh, Shubham says, Man, we know that our God can do anything. Then why does he do nothing without faith? Okay. Why does he do nothing without faith? I don't know the answer to why, uh, Shubham. But what we are trying to say is, that's what the Bible is revealing to us, that he doesn't do things without faith. That's how he works. So when we learn about the supernatural realm, we'll understand that God has a way of working. If you want to call them laws, spiritual laws, faith is one of them. Why is it that God doesn't work without faith? And we don't know. We don't know the answer why. But we are observing the law. And the law is, that's how he operates. If there is no faith, then we will not receive from the law. Yeah, Shubham, I hope that uh, was helpful. Uh, the invitation, if there's anything you want to ask, please. <laughs> yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. So you said uh, that we can't use faith to benefit, yeah. or we can't use faith um, where it involves other person's decision. Exactly. So if I am praying for my friend's salvation, you are my friend's salvation, yes. which involves their decision, yes. I can't accept for them. Like, I'm praying for their salvation. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm praying to God, like, they should get saved. But how, is, it, is it okay to pray, like, because that also involves their decision? Yeah. So, yeah. so uh, when you're praying for someone's salvation, it is going to uh, take their decision to be saved. But here's the thing. See, we are not, we are not manipulating their will. It's their choice. At the end of the day, it's their choice whether they want to be saved or not. But the Bible talks about spiritual influence. Spiritual influence. Now, as a friend, especially as a family member, we'll study about that when we discuss prayer. If you're a family member of a particular person, we can exercise very strong and great spiritual influence through prayer. So that's what we are doing. We are just trying to exercise our influence. We say, God, bring good people into their lives, do miracles, give them dreams, speak through your word. What's happening? Influence. Say, God, you do it, you do it. At the end of the day, so we are not manipulating them. We are just exercising spiritual influence. Okay. Yeah. All right. So uh, let's uh, close with that.
Yeah, so Shrilak is again asking about believing uh, and how is it helpful. So Shrilak, that's what I'm saying in the book of James. James talks about um, faith and works, which have to go hand in hand. So believing doesn't mean you just believe that God exists, as you rightly pointed out. Uh, one has to demonstrate their faith through what they do as well. So our works are not to earn salvation, but our works are to demonstrate our faith. So with that, we are going to close. And I request uh, one of us to please pray. I'm sorry, we are out of time. Uh, unfortunately, I won't be able to take your question. We'll take it in the next class. Could someone please lead in prayer as we close this morning?